All right, so this is basically my vPython that I basically used the template that Mr. Day has on his computer. So I'll turn this way so you can see me. But um, Mr. Day basically has a template that you can use, or it's, I think, up on the tutorials up on the website for vPython files. But um, basically, you're going to create a vPython. It's going to create like a little car for you and a little ground. And then using your um, results for from your um, graphs, which I'll show you the graphs also. So... Where they go? That's not it. Where my graphs? Graphs, graphs, graphs. <coughs> graphs, graphs, graphs. <laughs> All right. So basically, these are my graphs for it. Um, I basically had. All these things. So these are my two. Um, I'm not writing. I don't know. So basically, over here is my acceleration, and over here is my deceleration. So then you're going to use those for your um, vPython. All right. So in the vPython, basically, this is just creating um, this is just creating the actual object. Um, your ball dot v is basically your starting velocity. So you basically want to start out with a velocity of zero because that's how your car is going to be. It starts from rest. Your ball dot a is your acceleration. Um, so this is basically the um, sample one that he had up. Um, your ball dot D is actually your deceleration. And this just basically tracks your car. So I'm going to bring up mine actually. There we go. There it is. All right, so this one was mine. I basically just used my results from mine. So I put in my acceleration of 3.683 and my deceleration. Um, there's two ways to do it, but I'll show you those both. My deceleration was basically a negative 0.4812 um, meters per second squared. So then this is um, your actual situation. It basically says that your velocity is going to equal your velocity times your plus your acceleration times time. Um, and then the position of your mousetrap is your position plus your velocity times time. And since your velocity is going to be changing, so is your position. Your car is going to be accelerating. And then this wall basically gives you a time interval. So it starts from zero here, and then wall time is less than. This is from my um, Logger Pro. I, basically, my car stopped accelerating at 0.33 seconds. That's what I used. And then for this, this is going to be the decelerating. So it's from wall t is greater than 0.33, and then it basically stopped moving at about 3.2 seconds. So I just use that. And it's basically the same code, except now you use ball dot d to represent your deceleration instead of your acceleration. So then, when you run the program by just hitting F5, it's going to run like that. So if you watched it, it was basically moving a little bit faster at the beginning, and then it started slowing down, and then it stopped at the end of it. Um. Any questions about it? Oh, yeah. So you just input those generic equations at the bottom and use your personal acceleration and deceleration that should work. Yeah. Okay. And the value of no uh um, where? Point three 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 above the rate. Oh um right. Yeah. I don't see the rating. I don't know what this is. But you can um, highlight with the mouse. Alright, whatever. So um I was asking about this one. Basically, that's giving you a time interval. So you set your time starting right here. You basically want time to start at zero. And this just says wall time is less than 0.333 seconds, basically. So then um, from my logger profile, basically. And then up again. I don't know where it went. It disappeared. What? The rate. Rate, okay, rate is basically just how many frames per second. If I didn't put a rate, basically the computer can process it a lot faster than you want it to. So basically be done just instantly. So you have to set the rate. Um, you can mess around with the rate to see how fast you want it to occur. Like if I set it to, I don't know, say 800 or something, then it's going to accelerate really slowly at the beginning. Um, it's on the computer here. So you can just, it's on Mr. Day's computer here. So you can download template, or I think it's online under the vPython file. And then you basically just use that. You just copy and paste it into vPython. 
I don't do it. Where it is? Um, I know on this computer, it's just on the desktop. It's just called David Sixth Acceleration Mousetrap. And on the website, I believe it's under vPython. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's here under the Mousetrap projects, and you just download it. And then that's the template that you export your acceleration. Yeah. Okay. That'll only run if you're if you if it says go go back to the file you're running. Um, oh, okay. It should say middle with a B when you open it, and then at the top it it should say type. If it says anything other than that. Basically, like if you just made it yourself, it'd be a lot harder because you have design where the wheels are and everything. So this one just has that done for you. Oh. But um, the only thing that changes is the acceleration and the time. Yeah, and then your time intervals. Cool. Your time oh, intervals yeah. here. Yeah. So basically, for this one, you have to say, well, it's greater than this and while it's less than this, so you have to sort of just go on forever. Yeah. But um, what? which numbers did you change exactly the last time? And I think uh, if you have any questions right. now. So you want your actually this is is this mine? Yeah. I don't know why this is 0 0.5. This should be zero. Um, because your your car starts from rest, so your velocity starts at zero. This is basically your starting conditions right here. So basically, I just change this number. I change that number. These are basically in the x direction. These first numbers here. You want to leave the second and third numbers alone because that's going to make your car all go all weird. Like if you changed. Yeah, if you change like the other numbers, it's just gonna float away. So you don't want your car to float away because it doesn't fly yet. That's our next project. <laughs> um. So I basically changed those numbers. I changed the time intervals, just based on my graph, and then the time intervals here. And then everything else should be good. Yeah, on the graph. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, logger of graphs, I basically had, this is my acceleration here. My car basically accelerated for a really short time and then decelerated for most of the time. All right, um, so basically this one, right here that I'm moving around, that's my acceleration. It's about 3.683, so that's the number I used in, log of, or in Python. And this was my deceleration, that one. So I basically just used those numbers. And then if I like select my interval here, I can see exactly what that interval is from. So if you look right here, that time is about 0.33. So that's the time I used for the first interval. And then if I select this interval, and then scroll down, scroll down, still scrolling down. So my car basically stopped moving in about 3.2 seconds. So I just used that. Why are there two graphs? This one's my position read time graph. What? There's that one and that one. Um, this is my, because your car has two distinct motions. It has accelerating and decelerating, right? So this one, if it's a positive slope here, um, it's going to be your accelerating. And when it has a negative slope, when it's all basically going down like that, it's going to be your negative slope. You basically, um, I basically, so you like highlight Say you wanted like, uh, I don't know, for this part of your graph, you saw like that was say your acceleration or deceleration. Then you just select that part of the graph and say a linear fit for that. And make that just for that time interval. You just select where you think your deceleration is and make a 
then you're fit for that. It's up here. That one? No, no. Where? On your position time graph. Position time graph? It starts to slow down. Like this interval? That's my deceleration interval. Acceleration? It's just this little one here. So with that one, you basically divide your accelerations by two. And then I think that's in today's other video of how to make this. But you divide your accelerations on this one by two. And then you put that in as your A. Then you mess around with B and C until you can basically get. Let me help you with that just a little bit. The equation of the velocity graph, isn't that V equals AT plus V naught? So the graph below gets you A and your V naught, your initial velocity and your acceleration. So using the acceleration and the initial velocity, your A term here, this the equation of your position time graph is one half a t squared plus v naught t plus x naught. You know, you know what I'm talking about. So your a term is one half a, just like Jacob said. Your v term, you can actually use the v naught, your initial velocity from here, for your a term, and it'll come out beautiful. If you use 0.58, he's got 0.58, pretty close right there. And then all you have to do is adjust your c term, your x naught. That's what c term is. You guys cool? If you're shaky on that, watch the screencast I made. As far as Jacob goes, let's give him a huge love because that, that was awesome. Um,